Hey nerds, what's up? Today we are beginning the next reading vlog for Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Mass, and I'm so excited. I'm about 115 pages in, 120 pages in, and so I'm gonna go through the annotations that I have so far and we'll get this reading vlog started. I'm so excited. This is, we're now in the moment where like, these are my favorite books. Number three, uh, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, and Empire of Storms are the three that like really hold a lot of love for me. And I think if I had to put like one one on the top, it might be Queen of Shadows. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's go. Of course, as always, the map. There will be spoilers all up in this PS. I forgot to warn that. Part one, Lady of Shadows. So we start off with a chapter from Dorian's perspective inside of his own thoughts as he's still sharing his body with one of the Valg princes. And he says that he could not remember his name. And also he says that he could not remember if the thing was the prince or if he himself had once been a prince. Not likely. A prince would have not allowed a, that woman's head to be cut off. And, like, he can't remember anything. And it's sad. Then on page 10, she would not leave Riftold until she would buried them both. Talking about the king and Arabin. Um... And then we get some plot building stuff. It had still been a shock weeks later when the ship had passed some unseen marker just off the coast and her magic had vanished. It was a new sort of emptiness. Arabin's client rose to his feet and the sword with the eagle-shaped panel was not hanging by his side and it was Kale being talking to Arabin. Ooh, we don't know why yet. And so then we get that Arvin is in his late 30s, and I wrote, what the fuck? I always imagined him 50 or over. One, I've always imagined him older because, like, he's the one that takes Selena in when she's eight years old, and he's already king of assassins at that point. Well, that's 10 years ago, so that means he was, like, in his early 20s when he was already king of assassins. It just doesn't seem that likely. I always pictured him older. And then also there's, like, a lot of, like, creepy pedophilic things about Arabin and like it makes it creepier in my head that he's even older than he is although it's still creepy at 30 but like I just always imagined him older than that. Continuing on on page 35 the start of chapter 6 three weeks ago he abandoned his position at the castle and fled that being Kale and to join the rebel cause. So we find out that Kale has left the king's rule. What Kale had done, whom he had chosen, had forever cleaved what was between them. It was one thing she could not forgive and could not forget. So then, former magic wielders are being hunted and executed again, and the king's new guards, the ones that were all black, they like the darkness and seem to thrive on it. We get some Kale being an asshole. You came back, but without an army, without allies. You came back empty-handed. You didn't even try. He paused on a deserted corner. If your cousin Gallen was a block blockade runner... And then he says, while well, you were off playing with magic, off gallivanting with your fairy prince, do you understand what happened to me, to Dorian? And then he said, his shoulders tightened. This was all she needed to know, that he had planned to keep it from her, that being how to start magic again, how to get magic back. But from Aelin, not from Selena, his former friend and lover, but from Aelin, Queen of Terrison, who was a threat. He didn't try to pretend otherwise. Having magic free would result only in chaos. It would make things worse. And then he calls her Selena and she says, it's Aelin now. She snapped as loudly as she dared. Selena Sardothian doesn't exist anymore. In this scene, Kale basically throws a fit and says, like, magic wielders are dangerous and there's no, like, limits because they have so much power. And so, like, what about the rest of us who have no power? That's why I want to keep magic away. So a queen had found him tonight. Older as if the stillness and power she radiated had honed not just her soul, but also the very shape of her. And then we get this information about Kale and Nezrin, who he just spent the summer sharing her bed before he went and got Selena from Indovir. He needed it, the distraction and relief, and Nezrin had just been bored. And, like, there was nothing really romantic between them. They were just using each other, essentially. I like this line, she was her own champion now. Selena's amazing. 
So coming to um, Manon for the first time on page 67. Well, on page 66, Manon stared him down, Luke Parrington, again debating the merits of slaughtering him right at the table because he's being an asshole. And then the reeking cells in the belly of the mountain with the rest of the host reverns. Abraxas had gone berserk and taken out half his pen when they had tried to keep their own, the 13's reverns down there. So then Aelin returns to her apartment and there's a large flat box waiting on the dining room table. There was no sign that the lock had been tampered with and she expected no less of Arabin. Took the liberty of having some improvements made since the last time at Go Play was Arabin's note with the same black outfit that he had made for her and Sam um, from Assassin's Blade. She'd kill whoever was needed, whore herself, wreck herself if it meant getting Adian to safety. So then on page 82, we get this awesome conversation between Lysandra, who Aelin used to hate, and Aelin herself. And Aelin, I mean, Lysandra is talking about that the fact that she was in love with Wesley, and it started off as a mistake, but he needed you to understand, Selena, that he didn't that he didn't know until it was too late about Arben's plan to kill Sam and to capture Aelin and put her in Indovir. Um, Sam was my friend too. He and Wesley were my only friends, and Arben took them both away. And then the girl gestured to her scarred face and said, she did this to me. This is the young girl that is like the courtesan of Lysandra. And she explains that she told me that there was a way out of being a whore, but it would hurt and I would ha never be the same. So she told me to trust her and then gave me these scars. She said she'd done it when she gets found. She said she'd done it to keep me from being a threat and she let the pe people and Clarice believe it. Clarice beat Lysandra in the courtyard and... Clarice made Lysandra buy me for the amount I would have cost if it had been a full courtesan and like that her. that is why Lysandra is still a whore for Clarice, because if it hadn't been for that, she would have already paid her debts. So then we come back to Dorian's perspective, and the thing inside him yanked him hard on their bond. He was still screaming as his muscles betrayed him yet again, bringing him to his knees, the tendons on his neck lashing with pain, forcing him to bow his head. And... The king looks Dorian over, those black eyes full of delight. I should have done this years ago, foolish of me. He's gross. First funny time. I feel like I should cover poor Russ's eyes in these half chambers. Russ chuckled, I'm 19, old man. Nothing here surprises me. And then Nezrin says, I'm 22, and I think we city guards see a great deal more than you palace princesses. What Kale could see of Russ's face flushed. And then... Aelin shows up, Brello, and it's as pretty as before. Oh, Nezrin says that I saw her face last night, Aelin's face, Brello, and it's as pretty as before. Don't you have a wife to ogle anyway? Aelin snorted. I think I rather like you, Nezrin Felik. I just love banter. So Kale just continues to be a dick. Her dark gloves were clean. How much blood would stain them in a few days as she saves her cousin from being executed? Then on page 101, all I need you to do is give me a black bee coven under your command to test. So this is Duke Parrington asking or telling Manon to give him a black bee coven. And he basically wants to have a child born from the witches with Valg, like a Valg male pairing and a child born of Valg and witch blood lines, you can understand what an investment that would be. Astrin's face went splotchy when she is confronting a a Manon about this. Wishlings are sacred, sacred Manon. Oh my god. I put a little heart next because to this. at some point we find out more about Astrin and I can't remember if it's in this book but it's like really, really sad and I'm sad. And Astrin goes on and says to harm a pregnant witch, to harm her unborn witchling on her or her daughter was a breach of code. Oh no. This is just Manon thinking about it. Was a breach of code so profound that there was no amount of suffering that could be inflicted upon the perpetrator to match the heinousness of the crime. And witchlings are really rare. rare. Uh, witches don't have babies. Because of that argument, though, at Manon tells Astrid that she's now her third instead of her second. And she moves her second up. I mean, her third up to be her second. And that's Sorel. And Sorel says, more than any of us, Astrid has never for a second forgotten what your grandmother is capable of and this just goes towards more of that conversation that i was just having about things that we're gonna find out and i really hope we find out in this book because it's a lot of foreshadowing and it's to really come intense. back arabin has requested selena or aelin's presence so she goes to arabin's keep 
Should you decide not to fulfill your end of the bargain, you'll find out very quickly, Selena Darling, how deadly this city can be for those who run, even fire-breathing bitch queens. And so, of course, he continues to be threatening. But then we get a conversation with Lysandra again. Lysandra is back at Aelin's apartment, and Lysandra's green eyes flickered. The Lysandra you knew died a long time ago. Um... And with soft savagery, Lys Lysandra says, I came to help you destroy him, meaning Arabin. And she says, you wrecked the vaults. It was for Sam, wasn't it? And then she lay awake in bed, in his bed, Arabin's bed, the night after he killed Wesley and thought about killing him right there. But it didn't seem like enough. The debt belong didn't belong only to me. Ow! Aileen couldn't say anything. You honestly mean to imply that you've been waiting for me this whole time? You loved Sam as much as I loved Wesley. Ow. So then their banter is great. Um, so that Lysandra says that she'll sneak back in here soon and we can eat chocolates, chocolates until we vomit. We're such refined genteel ladies, please, Lysandra said, waving a manicured hand. You and I are nothing but wild beasts wearing human skins. Don't even try to den de deny it. And Aelin starts thinking about the fact that she is in her animal skin, not in her face skin. And I wrote that Lysandra has magic too because it's true and I'm excited. And so that's where I am now. I'm so excited that Lysandra has shown back up. I'm so excited for some female friendship in this. We've been missing that, I think, with the last book. That's really what, like, wasn't enough for me in the third book because <sighs> poor Nehemia died at the end of book two. And so we were just missing that. And we're just, like, in the depths of Selena's depression with and grief with losing Nehemia. And so I'm just really excited that Lysandra is so quickly a friend to her excuse my pa pants i am wearing a romper today it's like low cut and then it's shorts i like it um but yeah so like so close to the beginning there's the comparison there so close to the beginning we're getting lysandra friendship and i'm just really excited for that to bloom and it really like comes from they're both wanting to avenge their lovers and get revenge on Arbin and I'm just really excited for that to happen so yeah I'm gonna go continue reading for a little bit and I will update you when I have some more to show you but that's where I am I'm so excited to continue this book okay bye hello it's been a while since I updated this um the last time we spoke I got to page 120 showing you off what I annotated and um this is this is how much book is left. <laughs> so uh, let's get right on into this. Chapter 14 is where we start. And on page 122, in my angry color, touch him, Kale said, and I'll make sure those bastards down there find Adian. Nezrin s silently turned to then slackening her brow. Bo. It was the only card he had to play, even if it made him a bastard as well. And this is back when Selena goes into the castle and um, she basically attempts to kill Dorian because she believes that there is no hope left for him. And then a thud silenced the city square. People applauded, applauded. And this is watching different traitors die. Take out the clock tower in the garden, he said, and magic will be free. Take out one and magic is free. This is what Kale had found out. And he finally tells Selena that that is how she can free magic. The man was sobbing, begging them as he was forced to kneel in the puddle of his friend's blood. The executioner lifted his axe, and a dagger, courtesy of Aelin Galathinius, went clean through the executioner's throat. So she saves one of the traitors. Then on page 131, it was just a matter of finding the right moment to meet the end of his own choosing. And that is Adian, because he's still imprisoned, and he's trying to figure out how to die by his choice the dance instructor who's helping Selena make this big saving Adian escapade and she says there was no finer conductor no greater ear I miss him and she's talking about the conductor who died back in the other book um when they played all of the sad songs I will spend the rest of my life knowing that I may never hear finer music it took Aileen a moment to be able to speak again
And then the conductor tells Aelin because she does know who Aelin is. When you shatter the chains of this world and forge the next, remember that art is as vital as food to a kingdom. Wherever you set your throne, no matter how long it takes, I will come to you and I will bring music and dancing. So then Elena, El, Aelin is described as she has, was a whirling cloud of death, a queen of shadows, and these men were already carrying. Ah! So the scene of Aelin saving Adian is so beautiful. It's like so almost ethereal in my opinion. You have these like dancers who are slowly setting these beautiful crystals all over the place and then boom, they all blow up and they make everything dark and hard to see. And ah, I love it. So Adian is saved. And so then we go back to Aelin's apartment and when Aelin emerges, She's wearing one of Sam's old white t-shirts and a pair of his undershorts. She swallowed once. I killed a lot of people today. I'm not in the mood to analyze it. And the next time you decide you don't trust me, she says to Kale, try, to try not to prove it at a time when my life or Adian's is on the line. A flash of his bronze eyes told her he'd somehow already seen Nezrin because he was the one who put Nezrin up to it to make sure that Dorian didn't die. So then Lysandra shows up and is looking at Adian, the hot hunk who's in the room, and she says the resemblance is uncanny. Even though he's a handsome bastard, it'd be like kissing you. And I died a little bit. It was great. So then we go to Manon's perspective and dark fell things that went on under those mountains people being splayed open on black stone altars and then forged into something new something other this is actually not manon's perspective this is a lead's perspective My so mistake. manon catches a lead in her room and manon tells her do not pretend that you are some meek pathetic little girl when i see when i can see that vicious mind working behind your eyes More world building here the fey the vow kidnapped and stole whatever fey they could the offspring became us witches and iron teeth took after our valg ancestors while the crokins got more fey traits they have no laws no codes uh speaking of the vow also, look at how disgusting my lines are. I was reading in the car and trying to annotate at the same time. It did not go well. We get this scene where Nezrin points out that Arabin is probably playing Kale. She tells Kale that you're the one that went to Arabin a second time, even after she warned you not to, because Arabin always has something up his sleeve. And so K Selena or Aelin warned him not to go to him. And Nezrin says, I became a city guard because not a single one of them came to my aid the day other school children surrounded me with stones in their hands. The responsibility also lies with us, with how common people choose to act. And this is in response to him basically saying, like, I'm worried about Selena or Aelin becoming a queen. And she's like, you don't get to not let her be queen. You get to react to it. Stop being a baby. Thank God for Nezrin. So then now moving on to chapter 23, we get some Aiden and Alien laughing stuff. So Aiden says, thank you for your spectacular rescue. Let's never do it again. You're, and then she says, you're exactly the way I dreamed you'd be. So it's a miracle that the king managed to resist executing you until yesterday. Tell me he's in a rage, the likes of which have never been seen before. And then he basically says that he's gonna throttle Ren because Ren left and she says oh here we go she looked at the ceiling and sighed loudly a minute of pleasant conversation and then the territorial fey bullshit comes raging out and then in the same chapter we get this cute scene and I just put little hearts next I survived to it. we're together again I once begged the gods to let me see you if only for a moment to see how to see you and know you'd made it just once, that was all I hoped for. She couldn't stop the tears that began slipping down her face. Whatever you had to do to survive, whatever you did from spite or rage or selfishness, I don't give a damn. You're here and you're perfect. You always were and you always will be. She hadn't realized how much she needed to hear it. Uh. So then Aelin shows up in the like fighting ranks that Arabin has, like the pit basically, and Aelin was grateful for the mask that hid the tightness in her face as Lysandra include her head, inclined her head in greeting because they have to pretend not to be friends. Alas, my fighter fell through. He says, um, I told the owners you were trained by the silent assassins for the Red Desert. You remember them, don't you? He's just being a dick. 
She wondered what it was like to have to endure the man who had slaughtered her lover, but Lysandra's face was a mask of worried, wary mindlessness. I hate Arvin so So much. back in the mountain, Duke Parrington is a big asshole, and he basically is telling Manon that she needs to pick a group to be implanted by Valg demon to have Valg babies. She'd gone to training where Sorrel had kicked her ass in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the Blue Bloods had seemed excited about this thing that Duke Harrington is trying to do. They had gotten their noses broken by suggesting to a Black Bee coven that it was their divine duty, not just to go through with the implantation, but also to go as far as to physically mate with the Valg. What? So then we move on to Adian's perspective and we find out that in Terrasin, the kings and queens had picked only one of their court to swear the blood oath. And Adian is still not aware that um, Rowan has sworn his blood oath. And so he's basically talking about, he's <laughs> talking about Rowan and he says, if the Fae Prince expected to be offered the blood oath, then it was an effort to keep him from tightening his grip on Aelin. And I wrote, yikes. And then a couple pages later, Adian says, when you're ready, I'm ready. And she asks if he still wants it. And he says, of course I do. It was my right then and now. But um, it can wait until we get to Terrasin, but it's going to be me who takes it, no one else. And her throat bobbed, right. And she doesn't tell him. And then the Valg soldiers, they went to the market tonight and sealed the exits with everyone inside. And then they burnt it. The king could have ordered their slaughter by any means, but he chose fire. Potentially, Kale is saying, because of Aelin. And Kale is basically being a big dick and saying that it's Aelin's fault that the king chose to kill a bunch of people, which, what? And she hisses at him, Need I remind you, Captain, that you went to Endovier and did not blink at the slaves at the mass graves. Need I remind you that I was starved and chained and you let Duke Parrington force me to the ground at Dorian's feet while you did nothing. And now you have the nerve to accuse me of not caring when many of the people in this city have profited off the blood and misery of the very people you ignored. You go. So in. finally, on page 247, Rowan says in front of Adian, I'm blood sworn to you, which means several things, one of which being that I don't particularly care for the questioning of others, even your cousin. The words echoed in his head, his heart. And that's how he finds out that Rowan has done it. You let him do what? What have you done to save our people since you've returned? He asks. And then she tells him to go have his temper tantrum somewhere else. Don't come back until you can act like a human being or half of one at least. He swore at her a filthy foul, foul curse that he immediately regretted. Rowan lunged for him, knocking back his chair hard enough to flip it over, but Aelin threw out a hand. The prince stood down. She, she That easily, she leashed the mighty immortal We warrior. go to Rowan's perspective, and we finally realize that Rowan is also in love with Aelin, even though we didn't know that until this book. And he's basically of the mind that she's off limits. And then she says to him, I'll issue a royal decree about my honorable intentions towards you over breakfast. He's basically telling her like, no, no, no. And she says, what message does it send that I'm a whore as if what I do in the privacy of my own room with my body is anyone's concerned. And then he says that things are different now. And he's like trying to remember his boundaries. She heard rather than saw Rowan jolt upright when she when he awoke because she was wearing a pink, delicate, very short lace nightgown. And he says, you forgot the bottom part. Also remember that they're sharing a bed right now. Then in her perspective, she's thinking that there's little that she could do to jar him or taunt him because he's like this immortal. And he says, we're not talking about this. And she says, Aelin one, Rowan zero because she got him all flustered. Back to chapter 31, which is back in Morath, we see that black fire co floated from Caltane's fingertips and slithered over his skin, leaving no marks, but he was still being tortured. This is just some random person that they are holding captive, and this is called Shadowfire. She says that it comes from me um, in a voice that was dead and hollow and yet vicious. It has always been there asleep and now it has been awoken, shaped anew. Basically, even though no burns are marring his skin, she's torturing him. Great, great, so great. So then Manon confronts Duke Parrington because she's not able to go see the Yellow Legs Coven that volunteered to be implanted. And she says to him that you won't have a God's damned army to ride those reverns if you lock up all of them for your breeding experiences. And he basically says, if you disobey my orders again, the next time it might be, meaning a punishment, and he would make the 13 be the ones who 
become implanted and then he also threatens her saying that if you try to sneak in then they'll never see daylight again and consider yourself warned and we find out that her grandmother is aware of this situation. Now we move to Elide and Elide realizes there's someone inside of her room waiting for her and so she keeps walking all the way to the moonlit airy and she goes up and sees Abraxos and his tail moves slightly, the iron spikes clinking on the stones wagging like a dog because he loves Elide and I love Abraxos. She tells him please don't eat me and he huffed as if to say you wouldn't be much of a mouthful. But his wing remained extended as if she were an animal in need of calming and so she sleeps with Abraxos that night. And then they, she awakes to be hearing a conversation between Manon and some of her 13. Basically she's saying that they don't want any of the black beaks to be taken and they're not going to let anyone of the other covens know even if they decide to volunteer about what they know so far about this grossness. And then she, Alid thinks that she's hiding, but little does she know that Manon has heard her. So we her. come to Manon's perspective, and she sees that Alid is sleeping beside Abraxas, and he tends his tail shifting over the stones. Isn't your kind supposed to eat young women? He glared at her. And then Manon tells Sorella and Astrid that she wants to get into that chamber. I want you to tell me what's happening in there. She tells Alid that. And Manon says she, that you're mine now. If you betray me, if you tell anyone, then we'll toast to you at your wedding party to a handsome Valg husband, I suppose. And so now Elite is in this position where she needs to go inside and see what the Yellow Legs coven is dealing with. And we find out that the person who was waiting in Elite's room was in fact Manon because a dose of fear goes a long way in humans. Elite was under the impression it was her uncle, but it was not. However, we then get a very creepy scene with Elite and her uncle because he calls her beautiful, murmured to whoever it was, like a moonless night. And, oh no, I'm sorry, not between him and her, but she hears him talking to somebody saying so beautiful, together we shall create wonders that will make the world tremble. And we find out that the woman that he's speaking to is Caltaine, up and up, making her chain, make sure, making sure her chains clanked as loudly as possible. Her uncle fell silent. Caltaine had been shoved up against the wall, the neck of that too flimsy gown tugged to the side, her breast nearly out. And Alid did not expect her own rage. I was sent to find you, lady. This way, please. She meets, meet, met her gaze and says that the wing leader is the one who sent for her and the wing leader isn't authorized to meet with her says her uncle and she says and you are she set herself between them i love a lead vernon smiled as wondering when you'd show your feigns a lead or should i say your iron iron teeth so he knows that she has iron teeth blood in her ah and then slowly, as if it took her a lifeline to remember how to do it, the lady slid her eyes to a lead. So Caltaine looks at her, but then she merely walked away, that dress hissing on the stones, and she doesn't say anything. We finally get the scene I've been waiting for, which is when Lysandra meets Rowan, and <laughs> she says, he's spectacularly built. I've never been with a female, or female for that matter. Aelin shook her head and tried to clear the image from her mind. Lysandra was grinning and Aelin hissed, setting down the bags on the great room floor and shutting the door. Stop that. And then she brings clothes to Rowan, I think. The clothes might be tight, but not that I'm not that I'm objecting to that one bit, but he can use them until you get others. And then Aelin offers to kill Clarice, the person who is in charge of what Lysandra owes as a whore. And she um, offers to kill her. And Lysandra says, not yet, not now. And then Aelin says, say the word and it's done. Lys <laughs> Lysandra's smile was a thing of savage, dark beauty. I love her. You then her. get Kale's gross perspective as per usual. And he, th he sees Rowan and a handsome fair prince. While Kale's own life fell apart, while people died because of her actions, she was off with Rowan and I said, are you kidding? Because how dare he? Throughout this beginning of the book, Aelin has been like off sneaking around and we don't really know what she's up to, but we find out that Lorcan is in town, which we actually already knew because that's why Rowan also came, is to track Lorcan. And it only took a minute before near silent boots scraped on stone below 
tracking her as he had done all night, as she had let him do all night. Lorcan rocked right into that den of vowed commanders and the word hound that had come to retrieve their reports. And a fight broke out. <laughs> Lorcan calls Aelin a bitch and she says, I'm rather tired of being called that. You'd think five centuries would give you enough time to come up with something more creative. <sighs> Love it. When Aelin comes back, she mentions that she all, like threatened to cut off Lorcan's dick. And she says, I at, least, at least I said it would be a big mistake, she said with a fiendish grin. I was tempted to say little. Rowan laughed, his eyes dancing. Then you definitely would have been dead. Rowan finally admits that he's aware that Lysandra is a shapeshifter. It all comes together. And so he he says that, and Aiden says, bullshit, and amusement, all amusement had vanished from the courtesan's face. Holy gods, what was fire magic or wind and ice compared to shapeshifting? Um, and Rowan explains that the scent is the same from previous shapeshifters he met centuries ago. And Adian says, oh, so that's what it is. Lysandra explains that she was seven when she found out that she could shift and she, her mom beat her and then threw her out of the house, um, which is depressing. And then magic was outlawed at the, at that time. And everyone in the, every kingdom was distrustful of shapeshifters. She threatened, her mom threatened to turn her into the th authorities. So I ran and I never saw her again. And she was wearing one of the beautiful faces that day when magic fell, and she's been stuck in it ever since. She doesn't remember if her eyes were blue or gray or green, and it was a child's body. She doesn't know what she would look like now as a woman. And Aelin says a, sh a shapeshifter would be a powerful ally and an even more entertaining friend. After a <laughs> Lysandra seems like nervous because shapeshifters... Are distrusted and I just love them so much. So moving on to page 333. Did you know Alid said her voice uneven with rage and fear how many times they were each to be implanted with offspring before they were let go? Um, from what I saw they've delivered at least one baby each and they are already about to give birth to another and Astrin asks about the witchlings and I put parentheses because we're gonna find out more about that later. They are creatures, black, their skin is black diamond. They have snouts with teeth, fangs. Already they have fangs and teeth of black stone. Um, the yellow lace have been chained to the tables or altars. Basically, these aren't babies at all, they're monsters. And upon hearing all of this, Manon says to her black beak coven that we're not going to free them and we're not gonna fight for them right now. And Astrin is pissed. And I freaking love Astrin's plot of this book so much. Like, we don't really know why yet, but we'll get there. And <sighs> so moving on to page chapter 41, or I mean to chapter 41, naked Elaine stood before the bathtub, unable to reach for the bottle of Arvin's chosen scent. His scent because he knew that a female male had come to stay with her. And so he asks her to, he had asked her to dinner to like plan the thing that's gonna happen. And he gives her this almond flavor scent thing. There's a sly grin, don't forget your cloak. You really feel rather guilty when all those mortal women combust at the sight of you. I'd say likewise, but I think you'd enjoy seeing men burst into flames as you strutted by. She winked at him and his chuckle echoed through her bones and When blood. they get to the dinner, Rowan thanks Arabin for the oil. My skin was a little dry. Arabin linked as much as, blinked as much surprise as he'd show. And Aelin smiles because he'd worn it too. So in this next scene is when Aelin gives Arvin information of how the king is controlling people with the ring, basically saying that he licks their blood so the blood is within him and then that's how he controls them using the ring. And by the end of it, Arvin attempts to control Aelin and Aelin plays along and pretends that she is under his control until they get back to the apartment and Adian didn't know that it was a trick and so he's like freaking out and then finally they walk in and everything is fine and it was very stressful. Aelin also lets Lysandra kill Arbin and mm, it's so much. So a gift from the queen who had nothing else to give a no-name whore with a sad story. At dinner, she'd seen the expression flash across his face when he caught Aelin and Rowan smiling at each other. She would find the love again one day, the same that she had with Wesley, and it would be deep and unrelenting and unexpected, the beginning and the end and eternity, the kind that could change history, change the world. 
So she brings the stiletto cool in her hand and she rolls over for Wesley, for Sam, for Aileen, for the child she'd been, for the 17 year old on her bidding night, for the woman she'd become, her heart in shreds, her invisible wounds still bleeding. It was so very easy to sit up and slice the knife across Arabin's throat. <sighs> I almost wish that he had gotten like a little bit more gruesome of a death because he fucking deserved it. But I'm also very glad that Lysandra got the got to do it. So then Selena has to play Aelin has to play the part of Selena one more time and she goes over to Arvin's house after finding out he's been murdered and has to like threaten Lysandra and like threaten everyone and then we find out that the will the sole beneficiary of all of my fortune assets and holdings should be my heir Selena Sardothian and Adian blurts bullshit <laughs> oh, so then she just plays her part being an angry Selena Sardothian and then leaves and I uh, on page 415 we find out that the King Erewhon is buried in the Black Mountains no wonder Morath is over there ah! I also started annotating in pencil because I didn't have my pens Lorcan tells Aelin that the ring that she traded for Rowan essentially um is the immunity of from Erewhon and so Maeve is currently immune to all the things going on except that Lorcan has the ring and he wants to trade it for the word key that is the Eye of Elena or not the Eye of Elena the um Terracin stone that they took from Arabin. We then have everyone in the same place at the same time. Manon is with the high witch her grandmother with the king the grandmother bows to him and never had manon's grandmother bowed or curtsied or so much as nodded for another ruler not even the other matrons so she's like what the fuck we also get this wonderful scene where we finally find out that dorian is indeed still inside and he the prince that is like controlling his body right now is afraid of manon because she has the valg king's eyes and so dorian is able to take control back for like a minute and he tells man in his name and this will be important later <laughs> we also get this beautiful scene okay so lysandra was taken prisoner arabin's doing his one last act his little such an asshole so lysandra is in, is captured that's why aelin and rowan and adian are there and so they they get lysandra out from the prison and the little like cart that she's being held captive in but Manon finds them and then this glorious fight breaks out between Manon and Aelin and I like oh my god my blood is so ready for them to be friends like I cannot wait for their enemies to friends to happen and in the scene Manon almost dies and Aelin decides to save her because she's like falling from the rocks so now Manon owes her a life debt and Oh, it's such a beautiful scene. We finally get the scene that I've been waiting for, which is when Asterin finally tells Manon what happened. And basically, Asterin, when she was like 20 years old, and remember these are immortals, so they're like old, even though they look like they're 20. Um, when Manon was, I mean, when Asterin was actually about 20, she flew on a mission and she fell in love with a human and had a baby. Um, well, she got pregnant and then witchlings are like highly revered. So she goes home and everyone is like, yay, yay, yay. Manon was out on a, on her own mission at the time. So she never knew of this. And the baby was still born. And for that, her, the grandmother beat her. It's horrible. It's horrible. I don't even know what else to say. But that is why Astrid has been feeling so strongly about the witchlings that are being created by these vague, nasty monster things. And it hurts. So Aelin pays off Lysandra and Evangeline's debts. And they may receive the mark of their freedom. And <laughs> Lysandra starts crying. And Aelin says, I hate you for being so beautiful when you cry. And then she continues to weep and says, just shut up. She lowered her hands. Her face now puffy and splotchy. Oh, thank the gods. You can look hideous when you cry. Lysandra burst out laughing. Make me want to live, Rowan. Not survive. Not exist. Live. Meh. 
Manon leaves a huge thing in the kingdom saying which killer the human is still inside him because they were planning on killing Dorian because they thought that there was no chance, but now they know that there is a chance. Mm -hmm. Basically, a lot of shit goes down at the end that I actually never, I ne end up doing this all the time. Like there's a big scene, like an actual fight scene, and I don't annotate at all because I'm so into the book that I like can't even think to stop and pause, but... Adian and Rowan are down in the depths of the sewers thinking that Lorcan killed all the word hounds because that's what he said, but he did not kill all the word hounds. And so now, okay, so they're trying to light a bomb essentially to break the witch tower so that fire, uh, magic will be freed. But in the midst of that, the word hounds come and now they are like not going to survive because hello so they need to get the bomb to go off so that magic can be free because that's their only chance and finally it happens they manage to make the bomb go off but they're still over over like unaccounted what am i trying to say like there's too many word hounds for them to survive but lysandra when magic was freed, she turns into a ghost leopard and comes and saves them and she became death incarnate and Blah. And then at the same time, there's all of this other stuff going on with Dorian and the king and Aelin and Nezrin is there and helps like save people with her perfect shots and ah, it's so good. It's so good. So um, Dorian finally like comes back and he like put like gets control over the demon and bellowing his grief, his rage, his pain, he snapped the collar from his neck. And then <sighs> everything happens. So basically they, Dorian kills the king finally and the whole glass part of the castle is destroyed. Um, Aelin saves the whole city from all the glass that blows up by turning it into melt, like melting it. And for a second, the king shows up and we realize that the king is also being controlled by a Valg because he suddenly comes back and he says in a voice she had never heard, the king whispered, my boy. <laughs> Sad. And he basically explains that he, the king, the true king, is the one who decided to build the towers because he was trying to save Dorian. But little did he know that because he used his own blood, then Dorian's magic would also maintain being free. Back in Morath, Caltaine is the one who basically tells Elide and Manon, you need to run, get out of here because she's going to destroy it. So they're running, they're escaping, they're getting out. And essentially what happens is Caltaine blows up Morath. Um, in order to kill all of these monster babies and also save the Yellow Legs Coven by killing them. And so that happens and the 13 do escape. <sighs> we find out that Lorcan, so Lorcan also came and helped in the dungeon in the sewers. He helped Rowan and Adian and he basically admits that the only reason he came down to help them is because he didn't want to kill Gabriel's son. So thanks Adian for being Gabriel's son because that's the only reason you guys all survived. We also find out that in the fight with the king, the king did not kill Kale, but he did hurt him. And Rowan was able to do some healing, but not all healing. And so Kale is paralyzed from the waist down. And they encourage him to go to the Tori Chesme, which is in the Southern continent in order to see if he can be healed. And so Nezrin and Kale plan to go there. That is how Tower of Dawn, Dawn starts. <laughs> Manon says about Caltaine, she did it for herself to free herself and she was entitled to, she was entitled to rip the entire damn world to shreds because of what happened to her essentially. And Alid goes her separate ways. Manon basically drops her off and tells her you should go to um, Terrison because that's where your queen is and she, Manon says to her, you should hope you do not see me again, Elite Loken. All the same, Elite said, I hope I do. She bowed to the wing leader. And to her surprise, Manon bowed back. Ah! So then also everyone is planning on going up north. And this is the part where Aelin offers Lysandra a little piece of land in Terrasin, and it could use a lady. 
plagued by ghost leopards, hence the engraving on the ring, says Aelin. And Lysander says, no one will ever want to serve me. But Aelin had commissioned this ring weeks ago, and she says, there is no one who, who deserves it more, grabbing her friend's hand and putting the ring on her finger. I'm sad and happy all at once. So then Manon says, things are changing because she goes up to the 13 and is like, or to Astrin, and ask her what is it like to love and so Astrin talks about the witchling and the love of her life the human man and she says I'm surprised you're not giving me the obedience discipline brutality speech and then Manon remembers the made into monsters and things are changing Manon said good Astrin said we are immor immortals things should change and often or they'll get boring and that's essentially the end of this book we end this book with Dorian being king in where he is I can't remember the place how whatever and um Aelin and her court are going north towards Terrasin um Kale and Nezrin are leaving for the southern continent to see if he can be healed and Manon and the 13 escaped Morath Morath is gone and now what's gonna happen next Elite is also heading north separately so much is happening. I'm so ready for Empire of Storms. Ah, okay, so if you're interested in watching the live show for this book, I'll link it up in the cards above. The live show for Queen of, for Empire of Storms, which I do not have the dust jacket on, but Empire of Storms is going to be on October 29th, which is a Tuesday at 5 p.m. PST on my channel. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. This book looks smaller, like look at this. If you guys don't know this about these books, Look at the size difference in this, Queen of Shadows, Empire Storms, but little do you know that Empire Storms is actually 30 pages longer than Queen of Shadows. They just decided to use like paper thin, like thinner pages so that they wouldn't be bigger. So it's like Bible pages rather than the nice thick ones. It's like 670 pages. So I'm starting this next. Keep an eye out for a new vlog because as you know, I'm doing these for all of these books. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you want to see more of or anything like that with these types of vlogs. I'm still kind of like getting the hang of this type of vlog, like the one book vlog thing. But yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to see more of or anything like that. I'm so excited. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. I post videos every Thursday and Saturday, so I will see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye!